In this question, we have to provide the reasons for the given statements. The first one is, dioxygen is a gas but sulfur is a solid. The difference in physical states of dioxygen and sulfur at room temperature is primarily due to their different molecular structures and intermolecular forces. Dioxygen exists as a small diatomic molecule with weak Van der Waals forces between them. These weak forces result in a low boiling point, so oxygen is a gas at room temperature. While in case of sulfur, it is typically existing as a larger, more complex S8 molecules in its solid form. These molecules form a solid with stronger Van der Waals forces and other intermolecular interactions. The higher molecular weight and the stronger intermolecular forces result in sulfur being a solid at room temperature. The second one is nitrogen monoxide gas released by jet aeroplanes is slowly depleting the ozone layer. This is again a correct statement. The nitrogen monoxide is contributing to the depletion of the ozone layer as per the given equations. The first step is Nitrogen monoxide react with oxygen in the atmosphere to produce nitrogen dioxide NO2. And in the second step, this nitrogen dioxide will undergo decomposition by absorbing UV light. And they will produce again the nitrogen monoxide and oxygen atom. And in the third step, the reactive oxygen atom produced from the nitrogen dioxide is reacting with ozone molecule and they will produce oxygen molecule. The overall effect is a catalytic cycle where the nitrogen oxides both NO and NO2 contribute to the breakdown of ozone. It will lead to the ozone depletion and an increase in harmful UV radiation reaching the surface of the earth. The third statement is interhalogens are more reactive than pure halogens. The interhalogen compounds such as iodine monochloride that is ICL and iodine monobromide such as IBRR generally more reactive than the pure halogens due to the unique electronic properties. The first one is polarization effect. In interhalogen compounds, the halogen atoms have differing electron negativities. For example, in ICL, iodine is less electronegative than chlorine, so they will lead to a significant polarization of iodine-chlorine bond and it makes the bond more polar and weakening it. This polarization makes the molecule more reactive in certain chemical reactions. And in terms of bond strength, we can say the bond between iodine and another halogen is weaker compared to the bonds in pure halogen molecules. The weaker bond in these compounds makes them more prone to breaking and participating in chemical reactions. The third one is electronic effect. The presence of a less electronegative halogen in the compound increase the overall electron density around more electronegative halogen. This creates an environment where the compound can more readily participate in reactions involving electron transfer. 